Um, now, no doubt Simon's asked you this before, but I'll have to start uh, on this note, I think. Both your albums, uh, Swoon and Steve McQueen, were adored by all the uh, critics over here in England. Well, what is it about you that, that, that makes them fall at your feet, do you think? What a so nice much. question. <laughs> <laughs> I could point to a few reviews that are completely the contrary of that. Um, oh, but you are very much the critics' face, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, well, what can I say? I think that um, whenever we do anything, really, it sounds a, a completely ordinary thing to say, but we, you start by pleasing yourself. And I think I've got quite high standards in terms of the things that I, that I like to hear and like to hear done. And I, I always go back to um, very basic things that I liked in other people's records. Like I like the Beatles for um, str the strength of the melodies, the strength of the lyrics. And I always hope that we have in our music some of that. I know we've been, we've been criticised for having, um, for being sort of what, have, what has been termed um, unusual melodies. I just like to think that they're strong, but maybe a bit different. Now, what about all this stuff that, um, in interviews that you've given in the past, you've uh, proclaimed yourself to be one of the yeah. great songwriters, yeah. you know, up, yeah. up there with, with Lennon and McCartney now, or whatever. Hang on, do, you, hang do, you, do you get a bit hang of a fool when you see it in print, no, though, after? Um, when, yes, when you see things in print, they're completely out of proportion. You can be having a... You, if, if you... If, the, if your viewer was to imagine him or her having a conversation with a friend about groups that they liked or disliked, they might say, I hate that group. If they were then to see it in print, it suddenly looks much stronger than just a, a common expression. Similarly, when I'm talking to someone, if I get uh, very heated in an argument about songwriting, then I'm likely to come out with things that written down would, lo would look really awful. I mean, um, so okay, well, nobody's writing this down, Paddy. How mm. good are you, then? How good am I? I wouldn't put myself up there with Lennon McCartney. That's the first thing. I don't do that. What, when I've said things in the past, it's more in terms of... This is difficult to explain, but I look at today's songwriting, songwriting scene or records, and I don't see much there that scares me to death, if I can describe it in a sort of negative way. There's nothing that it's like... You look around for, for people whose company you would be ashamed to be in, and most of the people who would scare me to death are now dead themselves, are not <laughs> functioning on the same level mm. they did when they were great, the Beach Boys and the Beatles, people like that. I don't see them, they, are, they don't, well, the Beatles are finished, but th there's not the same competition there. And I've, I view today the, the sort of contemporary songwriters um, as kind of, they're okay, and there's the people who make good records, and I like them, but nobody could honestly make me think that there was over all me. That's how I feel, which isn't quite the same as saying you're one of the immortals. Mm. Mm. Well, do you, what's he like then, uh, really? I mean, this is, well, this is what he says to people like me. And when he actually comes along to the group with a new song and says, this is what I've just written, I mean, dare you say, well, actually don't think much of this one, Paddy, or is he terribly precious about his work? It's just it's never like that anyway, is it? Not really, no. I'm always defensive about my work. I'm never... Now, I could, you know, I could have to be bored. I tend to get arrogant if I meet someone who... who would maybe say something about what I do that is, um... If they were kind of defensive... That, that, that quotation that we're talking about here is, is, is where I said, oh, I'm the best songwriter in the world, which, which I made to a guy who actually likes us very, very much indeed. But because some of the girls who made the tea in his office <laughs> said, oh, you're going to interview pre I said, ha, ha, ha. Instead of him sticking up for himself and saying, I think it's great, he got very defensive with them. And he told me this story, and I got, I got quite worked up about it. And I, it was more really an object lesson to him saying, look, if you like something, if you believe something very good, then you've got to say it because there's so much mediocrity. Everybody knows it. You sit on the radio or the television and you go, what are we wasting our time with this for? Everybody thinks that, but just if someone who makes records ever says it, then they're not really being diplomatic or, 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 or nice. That's the thing. But when it actually comes to me playing my things, I'm defensive as hell about that. <laughs> and people do say, oh, I don't like that as much as... Don't you? No, I don't really. When do you... Yeah, yeah. The first video that we're going to look at is the one for When Love Breaks Down. Wow. Now, that took a few goes, didn't it, to get that one into the chart? It certainly <laughs> did. It's become quite a standing joke, really. Mm -hmm. Um... What can I say? I mean, I think... Well, uh, was that your persistence or the record no, company's persistence? No, Well, to be quite honest, um... Twice I thought was enough. Third time I was a bit embarrassed. 
um, and it worried well, about. But it did well. This is the thing. I mean, people in the music business know how many times your records have been out. I think to the general public, when they hear you on the radio, that they can hear you, and perhaps even if you're not in the charts, if your record's been played a lot, they probably think you haven't hit records. We've had a few records. If I'm fair about this, recently, we've had one. We've had When Love Breaks Down, which is a hit single. But both Far and Young, Appetite, and late at a later date, Johnny Johnny. These records were played a lot, and if they weren't top 40 hits, I reckon there are probably quite a few people who still think that. So I can't, you know, I'd like to have the record <laughs> sales to back it up, but to be played is nice. Yeah. Now, enough of all this are you the world's greatest songwriter stuff, I thought I'd ask you a really serious question here. Um, if you had to listen to an LP, a long playing record, by Wham, Duran Duran, or Aha, which would you choose? Um, would you choose? I don't know, recently I've been a bit... No, the two of them I would certainly listen to in bits. The things about both Wham and Duran Duran that I do like, the, so the songs... You astonish me. Wham, I like that very much a weakness of mine. And I actually think George Michael has undergone a real trendification recently. Mm. So he's not only massively popular, but he's really quite hip. I'd hate to add to that. <laughs> but I do like, um, I do like White, um, not White Christmas, Last Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, I, I got a cassette of that and um, everything she won. Yeah. They're you know, my favourite, favourite. I really like them. They're very good. Um, and Duran Duran, although I hate every record they ever make, as it's out, usually six months later, there's always something about what they've, they've done that I quite like. I mean, Wild Boys, I thought was such a strange record, that scream, it's not quite in tune anywhere in the record. And um, View, View, View from a Peter, Kill, Peter View to Kill, a Kill, or whatever. Oh. The, we've talked about that this morning on the way here, actually. Um, some of the brass things in it. I'm not sure whether it's a real orchestra or, or a sampled keyboard, and they're really quite attractive. But aha, I've no time for. Sorry, European <laughs> viewers. I've Presumably, you don't find that much to to, to rate I mean, chart pop at the moment, do you? I mean, you're a very discerning chap. I, mean, I don't. You see, I like I like I can get very 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 um, sort of academic about it. You know, all this. How do you rate yourself? Mm. And. When I sit down to write something, I do try and write at very high standards. I know I don't always reach them, but I, I always think like that. But in fact, when I put the radio on, I do sometimes find myself liking things that I know aren't very good. But yes, I don't, generally, I think pop music, it's probably always been like this, that, that you don't find people who have a consistent run of great records. I don't think you find very much of that these days. Mm. But I suspect, maybe through rosy glasses, that in the past there was a bit more of that, you know, the sustained run of great singles or great albums or whatever. But now I think the diversity is great in that you can get completely different things appearing in the charts, coming from different directions. And people have golden moments, you know, they do one record. Mm. I like that. I don't think that's, that's the nature of pop music, though. I like that, I, you know. Can I ask you, I know I, I spoke to Elvis Costello recently and he said, mm. um, talking about, I mean, Obviously, he's somebody else who writes songs to very high standard yeah. and, and does pretty complex work. And he said that uh, if he wanted to, he could write pop tunes, mm -hmm. pop hits, you know, any old day of the week. Mm -hmm. In fact, he actually said he could do it standing yeah. on his head. I mean, do you feel the same way? I mean, are you not aiming no, to actually I'm write poppy, poppy chart hit songs, or would you love to be able to do that? This, or is, what? This, is, this is very interesting because every time I sit down to write a song, I always, seriously, I always think I'm being very direct. And it's only later that I see that what other people perhaps can spot immediately, that, oh, well, yes, it's good, but it's not. You don't write out now pop songs. The record companies say that to me. They don't mind. They say, you do what you do well, but you don't write like George Michael. That mm. has been said to me. You don't write that. And for years, I was under the impression, seriously, that I was writing pop music, that this was, these were melodies and uh, catchphrases, and everybody could, could tune in them. So I reckon that rather than be snooty and say I could write them any day of the week, I reckon I couldn't do that. You know what you're saying, could mm. I write I mm. obviously can't, in the sense that some people can do the definitive uh, have everybody at the bus stop singing it in the morning business. I couldn't do that. I would like to be able to do it. I'm not being highfalutin. Mm. I would like to be able to have a bit more of that. <laughs> I just imagine a mass choral arrangement of when love <laughs> breaks down at the bus stop <laughs> in the morning or something. <laughs> Well, maybe possible. people do, yeah, maybe people, maybe one or two songs. I think I'm probably getting more like that, more into the swing of, of being concise. Mm. 
No, we're going to look at Appetite, the second uh, right. of, of our three That's of the best favorite, videos. my favourite, by the way, is of it? our videos, yeah. Is it? Why? It's most relaxed. Is it your favourite? Mm -hmm. Why? It's just the, wit, the performance of it and everything. It's more natural because when we were doing it, we had an audience. Like often when you do performance videos, you don't have an audience, yeah. you know. Mm. We you feel a fool just singing to two yeah. cameras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and pretending and trying try to be relaxed. It's just when unnatural. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Whereas that really was very quick work, and there's just something about that. I think it's near the spirit of what we're actually like live. Now you've just come back from a jaunt to Italy. I hear. How did that go? Actually, I, I heard you had some problems at the beginning of the, the mini tour. Is <laughs> that right? Come on. That's Wendy's dress. My dress problem. That. Oh no, we better not. <laughs> we're, we're, the first day we got there, I'd taken about three outfits, you know, for the tour and for the promotion for TV. And I had this gold dress that I wore on the Johnny Johnny video, and I'd taken that with me as the only dress I had. And on the first day we did a TV show, and I put my dress on, went downstairs, got on the set, and I was smoothing my dress down. And when I looked down, the woman who'd ironed it professionally, had burnt a hole in the dress. In the middle. And it's right dead. in the middle. And instead of saying to me, well, I burnt a hole in the dress, I'm sorry. She just, she cut some fabric from inside the dress, glued it on so that it was hidden. Hoping she wouldn't And then just it. gave me it back and rushed away. So I went mad and made them buy me a new dress. <laughs> because it was the only dress I had. It was, oh dear. Actually, that wasn't the story that I heard at all. I, I but thank you for telling me. I knew it wasn't. What was the story? No, I heard that you had to, um, uh, postponed the first of your oh, dates? Oh, that's that's yes, the, the first, it was only the first one. But it was, wasn't it? Very, it was bad weather and... The Turin, rather, Turin. because the, the, there was something to do with the, with the, with the, the wagon. We got there, we were in the city, but the wagon with all the, um, the gear on had been held up at borders and then there was snow. Cause the weather's as bad as there as it is here. It was rather than rush and get ready yeah. and make a, like, a rushed show. We just we, yeah. put it to the end of the tour and did so you got a, there. So you got a free, free... Choice of disaster, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant, though, overall. Absolutely brilliant. You had a good time? Oh, yeah. There were, that we seem to be more popular in Italy than anywhere else in Europe at the moment. And uh, we did a lot of TV. And um, when we played in, in southern Italy, like in Naples and Bari, their attitude to what you do is um, it's that football match, which... For the kind of band we are, we've never seen that before. We've never had all those little things that pop groups are supposed to get, like all the screaming girls. So we had two or three days of that, mm -hmm. which I've got to admit was enough because after a while, it sometimes doesn't. It sometimes seems as if you could be playing anything to fans who just want to scream, and it doesn't really, really matter how well you play. It's bad difficult, wasn't it? Performing. It was difficult. They were so loud that we couldn't hear what yeah. we were doing at all. It must feel great that you're getting that sort of response from an audience who don't necessarily understand all the finer points of your lyrics to which so much weight has been attached as well. It's so funny because when they sing along, and they sing along with everything you do, um, if you drop out for a moment, it's very strange because they're s singing things that are like phonetically similar. Mm -hmm. When Love Breaks Down must be wah, 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 wah. It's, it's not quite When Love Breaks Down. It's absolutely <laughs> mad. After you told me that one night, I was, was laughing nearly all the way through because I, because. I, kept, I was like noticing people in appetite. front of the audience. Doing when Love Breaks Down wouldn't be so bad because it's quite a simple line, but things in appetite, and you know that they aren't sure what it is. And you, they're, like just, they're just like just put mouth. syllables in. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's probably got better lyrics, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Should have taped them. Taped them all singing. <laughs> Now then, the third of our three of the best that we're going to play um, is a song that started life as, as Goodbye Lucille. Now, yeah. why did it become Johnny Johnny? Well, I thought I was being very subtle when I wrote that song. And it's two blokes talking about a girl who... One guy's telling the other guy, I'll grow up and stop mourning about the missing girl. And the missing girl's name is Lucille, so the song is Goodbye Lucille. But however, <laughs> because of the wonderful world of pop music and radio play, if you say Johnny, 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 ooh, six million times in a song, people think of you as having written a song called Johnny, 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 ooh. What about the video for this one? Because, um, no, I'm putting you on the spot <laughs> Yeah, here, I can tell. I? I tried fishing for, uh, for our lack of knowledge of that. <laughs> well, it's been, uh, there, was, there are two mm. versions, aren't there? There was, mm. there was one basic version, and now mm. I understand it's been cut with some scenes from A yeah. Kind of Loving. Is that a favourite old film of yours? Um, I like that film. However, how, how, however, I have to admit that um, it's being 
it's been treated with those pieces because um, we didn't have enough time to do exactly what we wanted to do when we made the video. So the, the footage that we shot of ourselves only went really so far as the performance. We wanted to do some other things and we didn't go any further than that. So we tried to get... Um, it can be a bit one-dimensional if every video you do is the band playing. And so that was an attempt to do something else. But I have to admit, this is... Um, I haven't seen the finished really? thing. No. What are you going to be doing next? Now you're back from Italy and... Uh... Well, um, we have our Hammersmith Audion concert. Um, and then really that will be it until... Uh, the end of the year, because we've got to record a new LP. What's the, oh, we're going to Japan. Japan! How could I forget? Oh, no, that is exciting. We're going to Japan in July. June. The oh, end of yeah. June, yeah. That's yeah. just before we record the next record. Um, I think it's mainly for promotion. I mean, God, it seems such a shame you fly all that way out. I think we're doing two concerts. I can't believe that. I mean, Thank you, please. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to insinuate to our, our viewing public that I'm not very fond of playing live concerts. Well, why don't we all stop arguing and have a look at this video? Because you haven't seen, seen it yet. <laughs> right, the third of us, three of the best. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, we shall now dreadful. take a look at, at this video. First look.